Welcome to making a Stuart model steam plant, part 45, silver soldering the end plates to the brass angle, machining the soldered part to fit the grill and making the drain pipe. If you've been following this series you will know that the previous baseboard that I made for the engine was a bit of a disaster and it warped, so I have a new piece of 9 ply which shouldn't warp, and before I can plank that I need to make this part. This is going to be the drainage sump that fits in the baseboard and things like the water gauge blow down and the condenser drain will empty into this. Most of the collector tank is made from a piece of one and a quarter inch square brass box section. Now I need to make the ends with some three millimeter brass and silver solder them in place. I'm cutting the brass with this really old bandsaw. It's a good machine really for what it is. It took no time at all to cut through this piece of three millimeter brass. In this clip I'm just making sure that the box section is square. And surprisingly it wasn't fully square, but it is now. I checked all of the sides to make sure everything was ok. In this clip I'm marking a piece of the 3mm brass that I just chopped off the larger piece. Both the piece of brass that I cut and the box section are at 90 degrees, although it doesn't look like it in this clip. Here's the general arrangement. I cut two small pieces of the 3mm brass to be a push fit into the part that I cut from the box section. Both of the end parts are slightly longer than they need to be. I will clean all this off after the silver soldering process. I'm just making sure that the grill is going to fit and it seems to be fine. I didn't show the silver soldering operation because I've made plenty of videos about doing that. Suffice to say, I end up with an open topped brass box. And now, using a small milling cutter, I'm trimming this to shape so that the grill is not a tight fit and not a loose fit in the top of it. The nice brass grill that I'm going to use that came off a model boat is not going to be fastened to this box, it's just going to sit in the top of it. That way it will be very easy to lift off and clean out the sump when required. This box sits in the baseboard and there's a connector pipe to fit to it so that it drains any liquids that are in it out of a hole in the end of the pipe. Once I'd machined the top, the grill was quite a good fit. You'll see what I'm going to do with the holes in due course, but not in this episode. In this clip, using a pair of spring clamps, I'm holding two pieces of mahogany strip in position. This will give me the level that the box needs to sit at. In this clip, I'm using a twist drill to mark the position on the brass box where I need to drill it to thread it. This twist drill is the diameter of the hole through the wood, and I just use the point of that to mark the brass box. Now in the drilling machine, first of all I drill a pilot hole and then I drill a hole which is tapping size for 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. The hole is not fully in the centre and I do apologise for this but unfortunately I'm not as clever as some of the experts who write in to tell me how to do things. In this clip you can see that I'm threading the hole using a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch tap. This sort of thing gets to become very routine after a while now I have a nice neatly tapped hole in the brass tank. And now I'm going to fit the tank into the hole in the baseboard, thread the tap through and make sure that it aligns with the thread that I've just cut in the brass tank itself. Initially it didn't until I tapped the brass tank into its correct position. Then the tap screwed straight into the hole. So everything is more or less going as planned. The next part of the job is to enlarge the hole in the wood. The hole in the wood, where the pipe's going to fit into the tank, is one imperial drill size larger than 5 sixteenths. Now I need to enlarge this hole in the baseboard so I can fit a larger diameter metal tube that will be threaded 5 sixteenths by 32 on the inside. Once I've fitted the sump and drain pipe, then I will plank this piece of wood in exactly the same way as you've seen previously, on the baseboard that warped, and as before, I'm selecting carefully the type of mahogany I'm going to use. I want to get as good match as possible. Bear in mind though, mahogany planking is a natural product, so there will be variations. And besides, a lot of this will be covered up by things like the steam engine, the boiler, the condenser and the water tank. I cut every one of these mahogany planks just slightly longer than I needed them to be. 
and after the planking operation I will clean up the ends using my belt sander, after which I will fit some more mahogany around the edge. Over now to my small boxwood lathe for a bit of metal work. I've fitted a piece of brass bar into the chuck. The first part of the job involves reducing the diameter of this piece of bar to the size of the hole that I drilled in the baseboard. This old boxwood lathe that I have is quite a good machine and I could have taken the cut to the finished dimension in one pass. On this piece of brass bar in the chuck there was a slot already cut in it. But the machine groove in the metal is not a problem, that will disappear soon enough. It's nothing to do with the job, the groove in the piece of brass is where I used it to test the centre height of my parting tool. And that was a while ago. The piece of brass is not too far away from the final size now. I think it would be a good idea to set my micrometer, which I'm doing here, using a twist drill which is 13 30 seconds of an inch in diameter, just above 3 eighths. Using a twist drill to set your micrometer is not really good engineering practice. But it's okay for two reasons. It really doesn't matter with this job because it's not a high precision job. And if it was a high precision job, I would still initially set the micrometer to the size, for instance, 13 30 seconds. And then cross reference the size with the markings on the vernier. It just speeds up the job. And for me, that is a good thing. The next part of the job that I should have done at the beginning, of course, was to face across the front. Now I'm using a centre drill to centre drill a hole in the part. After drilling the hole, I needed to reduce the end of this piece of bar to 5 16 of an inch. And quite unsurprisingly, I'm using a 5 16 of an inch drill bit to set my micrometer. Continuing the turning operation, I turn the end of this piece of bar down to exactly 5 16 of an inch. And the micrometer actually fits on there by its own friction, so it's somewhere near, I think. The next part of the job is to use a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch die in the tailstock die holder and manually thread it. And here it is after that job's been done, manually threaded. As this is going to form the drain pipe, the hole in the centre needs to be as big as I dare make it. If you're doing a job like this though, you have to think about it. If you drill the drain hole too big, then the pipe will be weak and is very likely to fracture. This drill bit is 3 16 of an inch in diameter and it will be fine for the job. Mainly because this is a very low stress component and when it's finished it's going to be fitted into the wooden baseboard with some epoxy resin as well. I measured the distance from the edge of the baseboard to where the drain sump box starts. And currently I'm parting off the brass to this length. This parting tool that I use is a very small flimsy thing but it's perfect for light duty parting off such as this. In this clip I'm drilling a hole part of the way down the brass tube with a twist drill that is tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. In the previous clip the twist drill was blunt and it wasn't cutting very well so I removed it and sharpened it using my Drill Doctor 750X machine. And now it's in a different class. It cuts through the brass like it's not even there. Even though the Drill Doctor twist drill sharpening machine was quite expensive, in my opinion it's worth every penny. The next logical step after drilling a tapping size hole is to tap it 5 16 by 32. I realised that I'd drilled a 13 30 seconds hole in the wood and I'd machined this piece of brass to 13 30 seconds which of course is going to be a tight fit and that's why in this clip I'm reducing the diameter slightly. Here's the finished component. It's going to fit into the hole and through into the sump itself. And in the end of it will be a removable pipe to drain the water into a suitable receptacle. This commercial double union is just to illustrate the principle. This piece of tube will be stuck in position with some epoxy resin, so once fitted it's not going to be very removable. And now is not the time to fit it because I need to clean up the tank. I've tied a piece of silicone rubber tubing to it because I'm going to place it in the acid bath for a while. My acid bath is half a plastic dustbin full of water with 10 bottles of Kilrock K Kettle Descaler added. 
This particular brand of kettle descaler is formic acid based, which doesn't seem to be quite so aggressive as sulfuric acid. That's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.